I mean, so uh, as we all know, uh, you, you know, Trump supporters on uh, on what was it Wednesday now Wednesday uh, stormed the white stormed the Capitol, uh, in you know stormed into the, the the Senate and into the House all with an attempt to disrupt the proceedings there that which, which was certifying or counting the certificate, putting the final touches on uh, Joe Biden becoming. Uh, president uh, on January twentieth, and uh, it was explicit that it was explicit in order to disrupt those proceedings. It was explicitly in the name of keeping Donald Trump as president. It was all explicitly in the name of Trump, uh, in the name of this idea that uh, this election was stolen. Force had been used to take away this election from its legitimate winner. Trump to an illegitimate winner, Biden, and therefore it seemed reasonable if force was used to use force in order to get the proper uh, the proper result. I think Trump and and everybody else who'd been using the 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 the, the language of uh, this is a stolen election, this is systemic fraud, all of that. Uh, and then encourage them to go and, and to take it back and to win it back. And to... That is, that is, that's what you should expect. These are the consequences of what you should expect. So we got what we expected uh, and, uh, and we got violence. And now it turns out that one of the cops trying to, trying to, slow down the mob, uh, you know, taking over the Capitol building has now died. So uh, blood is on the hands of those who went in to the Capitol and blood is now on the hands of those who incited uh, the violence. And of course, we can see the Democrats are going to take full advantage of this. This is politics. And you know, the, this is an opportunity for the Democrats to splinter the Republican Party. This is an opportunity for the Democrats to call out Republican senators and House members and make them take a stand. Are they with the president? Are they with those who stormed the Capitol? Are they with those who claim that this election is illegitimate? Or are they with the rule of law? And at this point, the law, as the law is that Joe Biden becomes president January 20th. But this, this is like they handed the Democrats this unbelievable gift. What Trump and, and the mob have done. They've just handed them this amazing gift. And the gift is that now Democrats get to have the Moral high ground. They are the party of law and order. They are the party, supposedly, right? They're the party of following the Constitution. And hey, Republicans, where do you stand on this? And if the, if, if the president really did incite this, as many Republicans are claiming, and I think it's true, then are you going to support him with this inciting? Or are you going to stand up and be counted either by demanding you resign as, uh, as uh, the senator from Republican Senate for, or at least Republican for now, Republican senator from Alaska has just, uh, has just uh, suggested that the president should resign. Or are you going to vote for impeachment? So, you know, I, to expect the Democrats not to Im try to impeach Trump and not to force Republicans to vote on this? <laughs> I mean, I don't, know who, I don't know who you think the Democrats are, but that's not what's going to happen. They're going to milk this for everything that they can. And they're going to succeed in splintering the Republican Party, in causing the Republican Party's different factions to, to be fighting all-out war between them. Uh, where there was a lot of, call it incitement, uh, where there was a lot of, basically encouragement to this is this is you know this is the struggle and you guys better do something about it 
Um, after that and after uh, Pence, uh, Vice President Pence basically said he would not do as uh, Trump asked him, which was to, uh, in a sense, not certify uh, the votes and send it back to the states, something that he correctly deemed, um, you know, correctly deemed, um, he correctly deemed as unconstitutional. Um, and that got the crowd even more upset, got Trump upset. Trump was railing against him. Anyway, at the end of all of that, uh, parts of the audience that had, uh, that had uh, come to uh, demonstrate support for Trump and to, uh, to participate in this pro-Trump rally on a day where uh, Congress was going to certify Biden uh, as the next president of the United States. Uh, you know, the, the, the Capitol building was stormed. And uh, pictures that I never thought I would see uh, in America, you know, we saw. Uh, we saw uh, uh, people storming in uh, to the Capitol, walking in. Uh, we saw uh, uh, members of Congress huddling under their tables, under their desks, being ushered out by security. We saw uh, uh, police and security uh, with guns drawn, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, in, in a, a guess uh, to try to hold back the crowds and, and protect the congressmen. Uh, we saw President, uh, Vice President, um, the Vice President ushered away and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, from Congress and, and taken, I guess, to an undisclosed location, who knows where, probably not welcome in the White House with Trump then. And it, you know, just scenes of trashing uh, of, of, uh, you know, uh, masks, you know, just, just absurd, absurd scenes of mayhem and chaos and violence uh, by Trump supporters against the police. Now, I know, I know there are going to be trolls here and there are going to be people online who are going to claim, oh, no, no, those weren't Trump people. Those were all Antifa. They infiltrated the Trump rally and they did it all. You believe that? I've got some great real estate that I, I, I don't have any, but I know people who have real estate that they'd love to send you, sell you uh, in, um, in, in Florida. Y you know, this is, this is, should have been anticipated. It doesn't really, when you think about it, it's not really surprising. Uh, it, is, uh, it is shocking. Uh, y you know, it, what it isn't really expected, but it's not, it's not surprising when you think about it after the fact, when you think about, if you think about the whole rally and you think about the people that, um, just, just think about all those people wrapped around, not in, not in American flags. There's some American flags waving out there, but people literally wrapped around waving, but, but embracing, embracing, um, Donald Trump flags. This is a, about a personality. This is about the worship of a man. This is about a movement centered around a man, not around ideas, because Donald Trump has no ideas. He's never had any ideas. He is the ultimate pragmatist. His ideas are he's against those people. He's against certain businessmen. He's against certain industries. He's certainly you know, against anybody associated with the press. He's against, and he's against the left. Uh, even though he, as part of his economic policies, has embraced much of the policies of the left. But he has a man and a movement that has no ideas, is not represented by any ideas, but is about the worship of a man. And those people walking around Capitol Hill with flags of Donald, Donald Trump flags wrapped around their body really concretize this in a way that is, you know, shocking shocking and horrific and the idea that they're fighting for america that they're waving an american flag that this is about america when they are clearly advocating for policies that go against the american constitution they go against the principles of america that violate the principles that they supposedly stand for and it, it's not like they have the balls or the guts to actually declare a revolution and to declare, to put out a statement about what they're fighting for and declare that they are revolting against the government that is oppressing them. 
It's not like they are standing for liberty or justice. No, they're standing up for a man. Not for the law, not for the Constitution, not for America, but for a man. This is exactly the kind of mentality that brings about authoritarianism. This is exactly the kind of mentality that brings us towards a dictatorship. Whether that dictatorship ultimately comes from the left or the right, this mentality is a mentality of authoritarianism. Now, you will say, oh, but the left, okay, so it's also on the left. It's also on the left. That's even scarier that there are no defenders anymore of the actual constitution, of the actual principle of the rule of law, of America. People talk about peace. People talk about peaceful demonstrations, although I think that's almost a contradiction, peaceful demonstration, because if I'm stuck in a traffic jam because of their demonstrations, I'm not sure how peaceful that is to me, but put, a, put aside the whole issue of demonstrations. There is no one standing up today for the cause of America, for the cause of the Constitution, for the cause of the principles of the rule of law, for the cause of capitalism and freedom and limited government. There's just authoritarians of the right, authoritarians of the left, and today the authoritarians of the right stormed the Capitol building. They stormed the Capitol building. Now, I wouldn't call it insurrection or coup because they're too incompetent and didn't have a plan and then, you know, just were violent thugs, emotionalists without a plan for a revolution. But yeah, they, what they did was commit treason, engage in violence. And what this symbolized, really, what this symbolized, really, oh, good, I've got all, the, all, the, all my haters on, uh, on, the, uh, on the chat. This is going to be fun. And what this symbolized is, is the fact that the right has abandoned the rule of law. The right has abandoned any semblance of adherence to the, the Constitution or to elections or to anything. It is their emotions versus the emotions of the left. That's all there is. There is no more standard of objectivity. There is no standard of the rule of law because they don't trust the courts either. The courts are out. Congress is meaningless. The only thing that matters is Donald Trump. They worship at his feet. That is what we're seeing. They wrap themselves, not in the American flag, but in the flag of Donald Trump. Now, I've been warning about this. I, I hate to say I told you so. No, I don't really, because I have told you so, but I hate the fact that it came true. I've been warning about this from day one. I've been warning about this for five years. Somebody said that calling Donald Trump today a narcissist on Twitter was a cheap shot. No, it's not a cheap shot when you've been defending that position for five years. It is Donald Trump's fault that he lost the election on November 3rd. American people were sick and tired of his antics, were sick and tired of him. Not of Republicans, they were sick and tired of him. And you know they weren't sick and tired of Republicans. The Republicans did well in the Senate, and they did exceptionally well in the House, and indeed across the entire country, propositions advocated by the far left failed in state after state. American people were sick and tired of Donald Trump, his pragmatism, his emotionalism, his narcissism, his irrationality, his disrespect for the rule of law, his disrespect for the Constitution, his disrespect for anything that disagreed with Donald Trump, his disrespect for his own people, people who stood by him. But as soon as expressed the slightest disagreement with him, were kicked out on their asses into the street. Time and time again, appointed appointee after appointee after appointee in the Trump administration came in with a lot of fanfare. These were the greatest people in the world until they disagreed with Trump, and then they were out. This is all about the American people being sick of this guy and voting him out. Yes, turnout was exceptionally high. You know why turnout was exceptionally high? 
because Americans had enough. And they turned out and the elections were made easy for them through vote, mail-in voting. The turnout was high on Democratic side, high on Republican side, high on the Democratic side because people and independents because people were tired of it. But then Republicans still had a chance of saving this election, of becoming an opposition party to Joe Biden and the Democrats, of getting a stalemate, of getting divided government, of getting their way. They all they had to do was win one seat in Georgia, one of the reddest states in the country. One seat in Georgia out of two races. Again, Donald Trump's antics, Donald Trump's disrespect of Americans, Donald Trump alienated independents, alienated those suburban voters that are so crucial, alienated. Republicans who said, what's the point of voting? It's rigged anyway. And turnout among Republicans was way lower than expected. And guess what? The Democrats want both seats. But even that is not enough. His obsession and narcissism are such that he continued this morning to talking about how this election was illegal and how it was fraudulent. Well, if it's illegal and fraudulent, then it makes sense for people to storm the Capitol. If it's illegal and fraudulent, then yeah, we're fighting for justice and freedom in the American way. And it's direct encouragement for them because what else can they do? The fact is that legally Biden is going to be president on January 20th. I don't care what you say on the chat and come January 21, I expect you all to come on and admit you were wrong. But Biden is going to be president. So the only way to stop that is, I don't know, a coup, I guess. But they don't have what it takes to have a coup. The military is not going to do anything. So what do they do? Well, what emotionalists do, they become violent. Because that's what emotionalists do when they don't have any other channel for their emotions, for their views, for their frustrations. Frustrations fueled constantly by Donald Trump. And then when you saw, when things got out of hand in the Capitol, a woman is shot, she's dead by a Capitol police officer. What does Trump do? He puts out a one minute video saying, oh, go home, but you're right. Go home, but this election was stolen from you. You're not being represented up there. So fuel it, fuel the anger, fuel the hatred, fuel the dissent, fuel the frustration, fuel the future violence. And there will be future violence. For those of you who still believe that it was stolen, where's the evidence? Evidence. We have a system of evidence in this country, a system of laws, not of men, of laws. And yes, our court system is not perfect. But 60 to 0? 60 to 0? And have you seen, have you read the judge's comments about the lawsuits filed? How scathing they are against Giuliani and all those various lawyers who filed the cases? Have you read the actual things by Trump appointees, by Republican judges? On what basis do you claim that there was fraud? On the basis that you hate Democrats? That is the new objective standard of truth? I hate Democrats, therefore anything they do is wrong, therefore anything they do is fraudulent, therefore I demand we get my way. Talk about subjectivism, talk about emotionalism, talk about lowering yourself to the level of the worst people on the far left. And what we saw today was the far left, the far left, is the far right. What's the difference? They're the same. I mean, it is infuriating to watch this. Now, it is true. <laughs> it is true that Antifa is rioting all across America. 
Absolutely right. Still happening, by the way, in Portland last night. Riots, demonstrations, burning stuff down. Still happening. And the media, many in the media, are not covering it. They don't care. And they should care. And it's a huge story. But that justifies, that justifies storming Capitol Hill, stopping illegal, you know, illegal session of Congress to officially declare that Biden is indeed president-elect, which is going to happen tonight. Nothing's going to stop that. <laughs> Here we got people now uh, actively advocating for violence on my chat, right? Actively advocating for violence on my chat. I will kill globalists, Frank said. <laughs> yes, that's the way to bring about liberty and freedom in America. You know, cowards, all of you, cowards. Cowards. And of course, why? Why was Capitol Police not ready for this? Why? Were they weren't people out there? Was, were the National Guard already deployed? Well, because nobody expected it. Nobody expected that the Capitol would be stormed. I mean, I was there in 2009 when, I don't know, somewhere between half a million and two million Tea Partiers filled that mall. And they were angry. They were angry at Trump. We were angry. I was there. I was one of the speakers. Obama just being elected. Obamacare was going to be passed. They were furious, and they were upset. But the spirit of that event was not, we're going to storm Capitol Hill and destroy the system of government that is the United States. The atmosphere was, we are going to fight. And what are we going to fight with? With our fists? With guns? No, we're going to fight with ideas. We're going to fight for the Constitution. We're going to fight for America. We're going to fight for the principles that this country is based on. That was the Tea Party. And there were maybe a million people out there and the media poo pooed it and they underestimated how many people were there and they made fun of the people who were there and they were good people who were there, who really believed, who really wanted to believe that they could change America and bring it back to its foundation. And what are those people now? Well, if you look at the crowd today who stormed the Capitol, well, most of them were young, probably not there in 2009, but a number of them were, I'm sure. Because what the right in America has given up on, what Trump has led the charge to giving up on, is ideas. What Trump has led the charge of giving up on is on America, is on the American system of government, is on the intellectual, philosophical, ideological, struggle that we have for Trump and the new right. This is not about ideas. This is about power. And power is to be seized by all means, by any means. I mean, do you have any doubt? Does anybody out there have any doubt at this point that if Trump could, could, he wouldn't mobilize the army to keep him in the White House? Is there any doubt that the only reason he doesn't do that is because he knows that they will disobey his command? Trump's presidency will go down as the most destructive presidency in American history. It has divided this country in ways that no president has ever divided it. It has emptied any intellectual content out of the conservative right. It has turned this country into a collection of tribes battling each other. We're going to see more violence, not less in the future, particularly if Trump remains involved in politics.
<sighs> this, you know, I won't say this is the beginning of the end, but this is a, 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 an important signpost in the end of what America is and what America represents. Not because these kooks did anything significant. They didn't. It's more symbolic than anything else. It's Trump's behavior that's important. It's Trump's attitude that is significant. And, you know, think about what the rest of the world looks at. They look at America. I mean, we have come a long way. <laughs> a long way. From being the shiny city in the hill that Ronald Reagan imagined us to be. The shining city in the hill, the example for the world of what freedom and liberty look like, of what the rule of law looks like, of what a battle, a struggle, an engagement of ideas look like. And Ronald Reagan was dramatically flawed, but at least he had a positive vision of America, a positive view of where we were headed. And what's happened over the last 20 years, as Ayn Rand predicted that it would happen, is that our mixed economy, the fact that the right abandoned ideas or the ideas that they had are so bankrupt, the left has abandoned ideas a long time ago, have led us to Obama and ultimately led us to Trump and have ultimately led us to no shining city on a hill, that hill so broken windows, that hill so mobs rampaging through it, that hill showed no respect for rule of law, liberty, freedom, capitalism, any of that. Yeah, it is the authoritarians all over the world chuckling and enjoying this moment, the descent of America into banana republic-like, at least at its fringes. Now, I know some of you are going to say, oh, but what about, what about what Antifa did? And what about the, well, yes, they're terrible. They're terrible. I spent the whole summer railing about Antifa and about BLM and about riots and demonstrations and the fact that nobody would do anything about it, including Trump, by the way. But where does that leave us today? At a state where both left and right have abandoned America, both left and right, have abandoned the principles on which this country was founded. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe this is a wake-up call. Maybe those Americans who don't agree with BLM and Antifa and those Americans who don't like Trump, same group, those Americans who intersect on not liking BLM and not liking Trump, which I think is still the majority of this country, maybe they wake up. Maybe they wake up and decide that the Republican Party needs to be replaced. It's time to kill this party. It's time to end it. Give it to Trump. Let him have the Republican Party. It's time for a new political party, for a new political movement. Yeah, it's not going to be objectivist. It's not going to be free market like I would like to see it. But just a political party of sanity. A political party neither captured by the woke, nutty, critical race theory, defund the police left, or by Trump, conservative, nationalist, narcissistic worshippers. A political party divorced from the authoritarians of the left and the authoritarians of the right. And then maybe we can have a real debate in this country, a real debate about the role of government, the debate we should be having about the future of this country, about the role of government, about how do we get out of the mess we are clearly in. And the only way to get out of this mess, the only way to get out of this mess is to channel the founding fathers of this country. It's to resurrect and improve on those ideas. 
The only way out of this mess. The only way out of tribalism is to get rid of this mixed economy of everything where the government is involved in every aspect of our lives throughout our economy, throughout our livelihood, everything, everywhere. We need a return to a true limited government. And it's not going to happen in one day, but we need to have that debate. That debate's not happening with a president who wants $2,000 checks, not $600 checks. He wants more redistribution of wealth. He wants a bigger government. He wants more infrastructure spending. The government's not spending enough. We need more debt. We need more constraints on people. We need more controls on the world. That's what the Republican Party stands for. Well, we don't need a Republican Party. The Democrats have stood for that all along. Trump should just join the Democrats. He's just joined the left where he belongs. And there needs to be a political party that actually stands for limited government. Not as limited as I would want it. Not as limited as you would want it. But at least move us in that direction. At least pose as an opposition to the nuttiness that is going on on Capitol Hill. You know, there's a part of me, I have to admit, there's a part of me that was like, these congressmen deserve it. They deserve to hide under their desks. But they don't deserve it for this reason. They don't deserve it because they're upholding the Constitution right now and upholding the certification of the states. If you want to demonstrate against Congress, you should have done it last week when they passed another stimulus bill, when they redistributed more wealth, when they regulated all of our lives. That's when you should have stood up. If you want to stand up for America, then you want to demonstrate against the government intervening in our lives, not against the, ele- the results of an election. That's what they do in banana republics. You demonstrate, you riot, because you don't like the results of an election. So I sympathize with the hatred of Congress, with the hatred of the senators done to this country over the last hundred years slow erosion, systematic erosion of our liberties, of our freedoms. I sympathize with the hatred of the left, particularly the far left, the AOCs of the world, and their commitment to socialism and economics, and much worse in our social lives. But I also sympathize with the hatred of the right, who wants to control our economy, wants to control our bodies, who wants to control our lives. I don't see a right that is pro-freedom, pro-liberty, pro-individual rights. I don't see a right that knows what individual rights are. And if there are a few members of Congress here and there who are better, then they need to declare themselves as different. They need to declare themselves as independent. They need to leave. They need to start their own political party. It really is time for something new. And you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it from the Democrats, I don't think. Maybe I'll be surprised. And it looks like now you're not going to get it from the Republicans. But if you elect, you know, I'll, I'll say I told you so again, but if you elect a narcissist who stands for nothing, a narcissist who believes in nothing, a narcissist who is concerned only with how other people view him, which is what narcissists are, but who believes or understands nothing about America and American greatness, then the world in which we live right now is the world that you will get. The only person to blame for the fact today that Democrats control the White House, the Senate, and Congress is Donald Trump. It's not where the country is. It's Donald Trump, Donald Trump is the cause, the reason why the Democrats control everything and why you can expect policies coming out of Congress that are disastrous for America and for our way of life. He has brought us to this. The sooner you recognize that, 
the sooner the Republicans recognize it, the sooner his supporters recognize it, the sooner we can get things fixed. I don't know if that's possible. I, you know, I, I just don't know. Because collectivism and tribalism are so ingrained in our political system that I don't know what it's going to take to wake people up. Maybe, maybe, again, today we'll wake people up. Maybe seeing those pictures. And again, it's not like a lot of people died. It's not like the place was burned down. It's, you know, it's, but the idea that the Capitol was stormed as Congress was doing its legal obligation to certify a president or to not even certify, to, to approve of the certification of the states. The idea that that would happen, hopefully that'll wake Americans up, get people who are not a part of the far left and not a part of this wacky right to think about wh where politically this country can head, to think about a, a, a better, more productive direction that this country can take, to think about some options, political options that do not involve Trumpism and do not involve socialism, do not involve authoritarianism. Maybe, maybe there'll be some rethinking of the Founding Fathers, a re-examination of the Founding Fathers, or studying the Founding Fathers, or reading the Founding Fathers that really needs to happen. Maybe, maybe people start reading Atlas Shrugged. Maybe this is a good time for you guys all to recommend that they read Atlas Shrugged, because hell, Atlas is shrugging. It's shrugging out there. It's nuts out there. And it's only going to get worse if something dramatic doesn't happen to change the course that we are heading towards. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.